Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video that I'm provocatively calling the only golf lesson you'll ever need. And straight away with a small kind of proviso, you will need to get a lesson to control that you're doing it correctly. But if you understand this lesson, my hope is this is the basics of a golf swing and this is all you need in order to play good golf. It's all going to start with the grip. And the reason it's going to start with the grip is because the golf swing is happening around your wrists. And if you don't hold the golf club correctly, you're not going to be able to move the club correctly around your wrists. So the very first thing you've got to look at is holding the club correctly. And that means basically taking it in your hand, um, a bit like a suitcase. First of all, holding it in your fingers at the side of your, your, your uh, trouser leg and then holding it up in front of you and you want the feeling that the ball of your hand um, is on top of the the end of the of the grip your th thumb should be running down the s side of the grip so if this is your your lead hand obviously the thumb is going down the back of the grip as well it's not on top of the grip and you should have the feeling that if you were to let go of the club with all of your fingers except for your forefinger you've got it kind of resting between the ball of your hand and the thumb uh, on the forefinger rather. Then tilt the club up, grip it with your fingers. You can interlock or you can overlap or you can even go baseball. And you want your trail thumb on top of your lead thumb going down the other side of the shaft. If you straighten your hands out in front of you, so basically imitating the centrifugal forces in the course, in the swing, then the leading edge should be pointing up to the sky. And that's basically all you need. And then you're going to go straight into the first drill and basically the major part of a golf swing. And this is lifting or hinging just the wrists up towards you so that the club basically hinges up towards your trail shoulder. And at the same time, rotate the club over to virtually parallel and then let it fall. So the club is actually moving through kind of a semicircle and although obviously it's not a pure semicircle, the feeling is that you're going to be lifting and rotating at the same time and then just letting the club drop. You don't need to do a great deal here, just let it happen. And if you're doing it correctly, you'll actually feel your lead wrist bow down a little bit before kind of rotating towards the target. I mentioned it in another video and this is really just the culmination of the videos with the alternate version of the golf swing. But you want to be looking at your waggle as like a little golf swing. Everything else we're doing is just to get speed, to hit the ball further. But this movement of your wrists is picking the club up, rotating it to the side and letting it drop into the back of the ball because we're wanting to hit the back of the ball. And this is all you've got to get into your flesh and blood is how to move your wrists in the golf swing. 1800 repetitions, that means 30 every day for six weeks. And you've got the synapses built, which will control this movement. Keeping it fresh by practicing it once or twice a week will actually help you to keep it basically as the movement of choice for your hands in the golf swing when your brain is looking for what movement should I use? You can practice with the hands individually or together. If you would like to, there's a link at the end of this video to the original videos, which actually shows you how to do that. Once you actually have that movement, the next movement is the movement that your arms are going to make. Your arms are basically going to pick the golf club up. That's the main thing for them. But in order to actually get the club on what we call plane, you're going to also bend your trail arm and pull your lead arm across your chest. And then you're going to drop them. So your arms are also moving through their own loop. You're picking them up. You're pulling them across your chest using your trail arm by bending the elbow and wrist, and then you're dropping them. The feeling in your trail wrist as it's just simply bending back. I call this the waiter. The feeling of basically being able to hold a tray there. And in fact, if you were to allow the golf club to swing through, you'll actually get to the second waiter, 
at the end of the golf swing. But to start off with, it's quite okay just to get the feeling of this happening. Up, to the side, and down. So your arms are going to lift the club, twist it to the side, and drop it. At the same time, your hands are gonna hinge, rotate, and also drop. So if I don't have any body rotation at all, you can actually see this massive loop that I'm swinging my arms through on. That is then attached to the body. And the body is gonna provide the other two loops or circles that you're needing to make a good golf swing. The first of these circles comes from your hips. Your hips are gonna be moving as if in a barrel. The barrel is a little bit wider than your hips though, around about the width of the sides of your feet. And as you turn away from the target, your trail leg will straighten a little, your lead leg will bend a little, and it will allow your hips to tilt slightly and move slightly backwards and to the side, almost to the side of the barrel. Then you will then bend the knees in order to bring yourself back to the middle, using the tension that you've built in your backswing, simply to bring you back to the middle, and then you'll actively rotate as far as you can before pushing yourself up to the other side, the barrel on the other side. This is the foundation of your golf swing and your hips will be moving slightly from right to left. They will be tilting the, the trail wrist hip coming up in the back swing, dropping the lead hip coming up in the follow through. So almost a, a little kind of figure of eight feeling. And at the same time, especially for you people out there traveling, having trouble with early extension, your hips are staying in the barrel also in this direction. We don't want it to be coming in this direction out towards the ball. We want the feeling of the stomach muscles pulling the hips back, with the hips tilting slightly back as you go back into your knee position and then pushing up towards the target. But if you can imagine the barrel surrounding me on all sides, I want the feeling of staying in the barrel and not going out towards the target or towards the ball rather. That's three quarters of a golf swing. Not too difficult really, is it? The shoulders and the trunk are basically going to be swinging the arms they will have massive influence over the path that the arms take in the golf swing, and therefore they have got to be helping the arms to stay on path. And they do that by first of all taking the correct posture. Generally, you want to be standing around about shoulder width to the golf ball with the golf ball for an eye in somewhere in the middle of the stance. And you want to get your, your body tilted forward so that you have around about a 100 degree angle to the golf club. Once you've got this angle here, the idea is to rotate your shoulders and also pull them down so they're more or less parallel to the original angle of the golf club. You can actually see this with help of the red stick here, that as I rotate, I'm not rotating as my shoulders would normally rotate, I'm also tilting and bending and crunching the muscles of my lead side. That is going to then reverse itself as I bend the knees and rotate my hips back towards the target, I will bend the right side down. So I'm rotating the chest through and crunching now the trail side of my, of my uh, uh, stomach muscles. That brings the feeling of basically my armpit turning towards the ball before I then push up and go into the end position and of course, smile for the camera. If you put those two movements together, that is the foundation of your golf swing. First of all, the correct stance and position. You want the weight more or less in the middle of your feet and in the middle uh, of your stance. You want your arms across your chest and you are rotating and bending the lead shoulder down towards the ball. You're then going down in the knees, rotating the hips 
the same time rotating your trail shoulder down towards the ball before pushing off with your trail foot, getting over the lead side. And at the same time, making sure that you are staying in the barrel, not moving towards the ball, not sliding laterally, more than the width of the barrel allows. There is a certain amount of lateral movement in your hips, but you shouldn't be just basically sliding in this direction. And for most of you, it will feel almost as if you're staying centered. In truth, your upper body is staying more centered than your lower body. Your hips are actually moving slightly from side to side within the barrel and at the same time tilting your uh, lower spine, your lumbar spine, as you do it. First of all, towards the target and then away from the target as your shoulders try to make this kind of perfect circular movement here, which of course also isn't perfect. But that is perfectly okay if you can get your shoulders onto plane, get your shoulders rotating in the same angle as the club had at address, you're good to go. So now you know why a golf swing is difficult. Not because any of these individual movements are difficult, but because you now have to synchronize and time all four movements at the same time. If you do that, you have a golf swing. But because that's difficult, it's not just difficult for people who can make these movements and have been doing it all their lives, it's obviously very, very difficult for somebody who still can't turn their hips, still can't turn their shoulders in plane, or didn't know that their wrists were out allowed to move in this way. Once you actually put it all together, it seems to make sense quite quickly. You are going to do three things at the same time. You're going to turn your shoulder down, you're going to lift your arms up, and you're going to hinge and rotate your wrists. And this will basically lift the club up and onto plane. This is something you have to do actively. You have to turn your shoulders actively. You have to lift your arms actively and you have to hinge and rotate your wrists actively. There is no other way you're getting the club off the ground and on plane. So this has got to be drilled with the help of a stick until you can get the club to around about chest height without any problem. And it should be moving quickly. We're trying to give the club energy, inertia. You can see if I stop, the club doesn't. And I'm going to use the energy of the club to pull my, club, my arms into the top of the backswing and drop them on the other side. The big playground in golf is the playground between you and the club and all of the natural forces which are working on your body. And we want to use them to help to accelerate the golf club through the ball. And this is starting really at the top of your backswing, where you stop lifting and hinging, and you allow the energy of the club to pull the arms back, and as gravity stops it, to drop them down. Don't forget that the arms have come up on a different path, the club on a different path, then you're dropping it down. And you can see as I drop it down here that I've now got the club almost level with my lower trail arm and parallel with the stick. This means if I allow the club to simply unhinge the wrists, I'm back at the golf ball. What you should also see, however, is my hips and my shoulders aren't back where they've started. On the contrary, as I have dropped into the downswing, I'm allowing my hips to turn past their original position as the arms fall. I'm allowing the trail arm to fall so that the, the trail lower arm becomes parallel with the stick as well, and the clubs to parallel with it, so the club is basically going to be helped through the ball by the trail arm by just releasing it, almost as if I was throwing a stone on water. The lead arm at the same time is being pulled towards and up away from the target by the lead shoulder. The reason that we're wanting to rotate our hips so far is so that we can rotate our shoulders even further. 
and the shoulders actually will help to swing the club towards the target before, just before impact, pulling the club up away from the, the ball, retarding the movement of the hands towards the target, slowing the hands down in that axis and accelerating the club and at the same time pulling the club away from the ball and accelerating the club in a downward movement. So the club has been accelerated towards the target and towards the ground at the same time. It's this acceleration created by the rotation which will stop the club just burying itself into the ground. A very oversimplification, but still something which you have to really think about when you're practicing the, ball, the game is that your arms are going to be lifting and dropping the club. Because the club is so long, irrespective of which one it is, it's too long, it's going to come into the ground. If I had it at this length, then I couldn't hit the ground. But because of the length of the golf club, and the distance I stand away from it, just dropping the arms is just going to hit the ground. But by turning at the same time and timing the time of the turn, I can actually control the low point in the swing. And I want to practice that until the low point in the swing is more or less starting at the center of my feet and finishing around about the heel. If I've got long grass in front of me, if the grass is pretty short, then I shouldn't really be making much contact with the ground until I get to around about the left heel. Once I'm doing that, I'm timing the swing correctly. Obviously, it's going to be difficult to get all of these loops working together in absolute harmony. But that's why the golf professionals are hitting buckets of balls every day. It's not to drill the arms onto the plane. It's not to drill the hiss to hinge. To hinge. It's to get the synchronization of their golf swing working. And it only needs a little bit of tension here, which moves out into your body to break the entire synchronization and timing of your golf swing and break, your, break the ball as well. That means that very little tension will suddenly cause all kinds of dispersion. Making these movements separately from one another will allow you to get the feeling for what it is your body should be doing. But the only way you're going to learn this game is in the dirt, hitting golf balls, synchronizing, missing them, topping them, hitting them fat, and just keep doing that until your body has the feeling, okay, I think I know what he wants from me. As I said at the beginning of the video, if you get yourself some video cameras or even better, a teaching professional, and get him to watch your swing, he can tell you whether your hands are moving correctly, your arms are moving correctly, your hips or your shoulders are moving correctly, and maybe give you an idea what you're doing wrong or which drill you should be doing more often. But when you really want to learn this game, you've got to put the hours in. You've got to take enough buckets of balls and enough hours to actually drill this movement into your body if you want to do it fluently and if you want to actually do it in a, at a speed which will hit the golf ball far enough for you to enjoy the sport. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. If you would like to get more content, please become a patron. I will be starting a new patron site very shortly, which will give patrons a little bit extra content and also a little bit more from myself. Um, more to come later. But thank you very much to all of the patrons who supported the site this season. I look forward to seeing you all very shortly with the next one. Until then, goodbye.